talking portraiture, e-products, auto editing, e-templates, educational videos for shooting smarter, not harder at the photo channel pro. It's been a long road for Fujifilm. Film, professional paper, professional cameras, professional digital cameras. Now the X series has really burst onto the scene for the street photographers, right? The X100S is probably the top of the heap when it comes to street photo cameras. Well now, what about hybrid pro photographers like me that want to provide photo and video and audio to clients? Well, they've finally got a serious contender for a pro to move away from DSLR into a much more sophisticated mirrorless camera that offers us the features to shoot hybrid that we're looking for. Predominantly, pre-processing. Sure, that's a little bit of a buzzword, but pre-processing means the ability for us to use a camera and use it in a professional level to allow us to not only stop the amount of hours we put in post-processing because we don't need them, but also allow us the rocket fuel for our creative energy to plug in, say, a black and white photo shoot, to put in black and white into the camera. When you pick that camera up and you look through the eye finder, you'll see black and white. Then say you want to extend a little dynamic range into the highlight values. You can do that on a Fuji camera. The quick menu is the most attractive part of all Fuji cameras for me. And the reason is, I can jump in and I can dial in my creative secret sauce, if you will, while I'm shooting. And if you're not sure that's the secret sauce you want, photo-wise, you can always go to RAW, but you may find out that you can skip your RAW workflow altogether. Right, don't get fired up. You don't have to if you don't want to. But realize, if you're able to shoot video and photos that have your look and your feel to them, you might be able to shoot faster with more creativity. Take a look at some of these photos I've shot recently. Long, dynamic range, beautiful black and white. That's what the Fuji X series is all about. Well, this camera breaks new ground. This gives us all the tools that we need to not only make beautiful photos and video, but it allows the hybrid photographer the ability to separate themselves from everybody else. Sure, you've seen me use Sony cameras and Olympus cameras, and I love Lumix cameras, but the Fuji cameras are different. Why? They've got gorgeous image quality, and now they're not as difficult to shoot as the earlier ones. Throughout this entire real-life review, we're not going to spend all the time on megapixels and all the scores for contrast and all that other thing. Forget about it. You can get that in other places. What we're going to look at here is the real-life use of what this camera can do and what it can do for you. So before you spend that big bucks on a camera system like this, I want you to take a look at how this camera really wants to work. So each one of the segments of this review, I'm going to change the pre-processing settings. I'm going to show you what I adjust and how I adjust it, and I'm going to deliver this without any post-processing whatsoever. That's right, no adjustment on color or exposure or adding my typical vignette. These are straight from the camera video and most of the photos. I'll let you know if I've added a little vignette or something to the photos. But take a look at the real-life version of the Fuji X-E2. For this segment, we're back in the studio with a color balanced set, top to bottom. We're using all high-end LED broadcast quality lights in order to produce the most neutral, balanced, properly exposed scene that we can. Because I want to show you what I think, at least, this camera is made of. It's designed to be a uh, thinking photographer's camera that wants to put input into the camera. In the opening segment, we talked about the pre-processing elements of this camera, and I find them most, most fascinating. The fact that we can plug in the film simulation modes, and this camera really wants to work that way. It wants you to decide what dynamic range value you want to work with by using a dynamic range function here, and we'll talk about that a little more. It wants you to know what film simulation you want. How much color do you want? Do you want to emulate transparency film or negative film or black and white film? Then when you do, you have the ability to change that film curve, for instance. You can change the color saturation, the overall sharpness, but more importantly, down here, these two are extremely important. That is going to change your shadow tone value. Now that's the word that Fuji uses. What that means is from the 
the midpoint of your exposure, down to the bottom of the shadow value, you can adjust that curve just like you think that you can. And if you're an old film guy, the H&D curves or Photoshop, you work working in curves. The highlight tone allows you to change the highlight as well from the midpoint up to the top. Now, that's the great news. The bad news is when you make those changes, they don't translate over to the video side. So I can show you examples of those in the photo universe, but I can't on the video side. The good news is now that we have the XE2 compared to the XE1, we have a lot more video control. So primarily the one that we needed before we could do anything was the ability for us to have manual exposure control in video we do now. The XE1, in fact, is only automatic and you would control it by using the exposure compensation dial. Well, now we don't have to. We can have full control over that. Not quite full control, but pretty darn close. Here's where we boost the color saturation and change the contrast and the dynamic range function as well by going to the Velvia simulation mode. Well, this allows me to bring in the positive points of the XE2. Of course, it's the same size and shape. It uses, of course, the same lenses as the rest of the Fuji X lineup. And the handle, the little extra handle that I like on the XE2 is the same as it is on the XE1, which is terrific. Same batteries, which is great. There's uh, also the new autofocus is worth talking about. One of the kind of reasons that a lot of pro photographers looking to move from DSLR to mirrorless or just looking to add a more hybrid sensible camera to their lineup would pass on the X Pro was because there's no audio in, plus it's kind of big and kind of expensive. When the X Pro came out, we really liked the camera, but not in any serious realm for faster shooting because its autofocus was just not up to par with what we need as a professional photographer. The X-E2 does not have the world's greatest autofocus, but they scrapped the technology all together and went with all new style technology to make autofocus, which gives us much faster, much more accurate, better low light autofocus focus, but they also added face detection. And in face detection mode, we find out it works really well. The only problem with face detection is some people with glasses <laughs> screw up the face detection and it won't recognize that it's a face. That's a little thing to have to work around, nothing major. This is the Astia film simulation mode. This is one that we used to use when it was a film. By the way, these are transparency films. When we had a, an executive that had kind of a reddish skin tone, we would use Astia because it wouldn't amplify the red like the other Fuji films that we used to use would. Well, this is a still, you know, got a transparency film look to it. The contrast is of transparency film, but the colors are nice and soft, and this is a very pleasant way to go. Very popular with uh, fashion photographer folks. Well, this also brings in the other part of the focus, the big plus on the focus, other than, of course, adding a better autofocus and face detect, is the manual focus on this screen, because we have a little improvement on the screen, is terrific with the uh, peaking, for the manual focus peaking. When you turn off autofocus, you have the ability to use focus peaking. It allows you to put that nice crispy line around everything. Now, that's a biggie when it comes to using these beautiful lenses because the lenses are spectacular in the Fuji lineup. Now that we've also got the Zeiss folks giving us these gorgeous lenses, that we now have the ability to shoot all kinds of crazy things. So while we're taking a look at different pieces of film here, <laughs> let me show you how I took an XE2 and I taped it with Gorilla Tape to the helmet on my motorcycle. And I went maybe a little bit beyond the speed limit to show you how well this camera, there's no autofocus here, this is manually focused, but take a look at how well it auto white balance changes and auto exposure changes on something as crazy as this. Now we're set to N, that's the color negative mode. You'll notice a drastic change in the contrast. Uh, also, we have two different versions. There's an N sub S and an N sub H. One is a softer contrast and color saturation, and H is the higher. This is the softer of the two. Let's go back to the topic of lenses. Those of you who aren't familiar with the lenses on Fuji, Fuji cameras, they are terrific. They're world-class lenses. They're extremely well-made. The coatings 
really don't lens flare at all unless you're putting a laser beam into the darn things. And even then, I bet you'd even have a hard time getting a flare. But they're in the class, in my opinion, with Leica and the high-end Zeiss lens and maybe even some of the Olympus Zuiko or however you pronounce that darn thing. I've seen some pretty wonderful lenses out of that group too. Well, Fuji also has another big plus. They're also fast, and that's what I really like. I love beautiful quality lenses that have a fast maximum opening. That gives me the shallow depth of field, Couple that with the fact that for a mirrorless camera, this is a large sensored camera, right? It's APS-C size. And I'm not big under the whole sensor thing, and I, I don't think sensor means a whole lot in the resulting image quality, because I do have smaller sensor cameras that are terrific too. But you do find out you get great depth of field control when it comes to not only the Fuji larger sensor, but that beautiful Fuji glass. I don't have any problems shooting wide open like I am now. This is a 60 millimeter Fuji lens shot wide open, and you'll notice it's a, it's a macro, by the way, so it allows me to get nice and close. The beautiful fall off in the background, isn't it wonderful? I really like that. That's something that I don't get with other cameras. Now, let's switch over to another color mode, and let's talk about some of the not so terrific parts about the Fuji XE2. Isn't the black and white glorious? Oh, glorious. Hopefully in the next version of the Fuji X series, we'll have all the rest of those tone controls built into the video portion as well so that we can do a little bit of tone control on this shot. I'd like to harden up those shadows just a little bit. Okay, let's talk about some not so terrific things. Sure, there's a, a couple video features that are lacking. You've already heard me bellyache about those twice now. Let's talk about the audio input port. Okay, Fuji has made it crystal clear to me as a person that, that works with them on a, on a real project basis, right? Uh, I do need to declare, in case you don't know, that Fuji does hire me to speak for them. I am not doing this as a promotion. This piece you're watching right now has nothing to do with Fujifilm, and I don't have any problems in being critical with them as long as it's honest. In fact, they don't have a problem with that either. I do rotate my sponsorship of my speaking events as well as some of my charity gigs between Panasonic and Fuji, and we work well with the Sony folks as well. So no funny business going on here, but I will tell you one of the things that really irks me is the audio input on the camera. Even though Fuji doesn't want this to be a video camera, I get it. The audio input is the, the stereo, of course, but it's the two and a half millimeter, which is ridiculous. The whole universe is three and a half millimeter, right? One eighth inch stereo. It certainly should be. So it means I have to go buy an adapter to use all my audio input stuff on this camera, which I do a lot because I make a lot of vlog posts and I love this camera for my vlog posts. Next, as long as we're on the belly aching campaign, the, the USB output port here, right? Here on the side of the camera, you see the mini HDMI, which works terrific, and you'll see a proprietary USB out. That's ridiculous too. Come on, folks. Don't make proprietary USB cables. Why do we need a USB cable? It's because when we're going to shoot video like we are now, we'll connect a USB cable to the computer. Then when we've recorded the piece of video that we need, we stop recording, we put it into play mode, plug in the cable, that runs it right across to the computer, no problem. The other cameras have the ability to use the Wi-Fi to move that video file. And in fact, we can move video files with Wi-Fi, which is a big deal here. We'll come back to Wi-Fi in just a second. But let's talk about some of the other things that it doesn't do so terrific. And while we're on the Wi-Fi section, we are very limited on what this camera will do Wi-Fi. The future of photography is hinging on Wi-Fi. It really is. We need to be able to move files on the go for event photographers and to use them for promotion for the portrait photographers and product photographers like me are looking to be as efficient as possible. And I want to, I want files, files flying all over my studio to get that job done as quick as I can. So we definitely need some improvement on the Wi-Fi. Then we got to have some more lenses. I'm told they're coming. And speaking of lenses, I'm going to do a review on the 55 to 200 zoom, but boy, that's the image quality is terrific, but it's tough to use on this camera. Unless you've got the external mount, it's very front heavy. So I want to wrap up the things that I'm not super happy about. One is no custom white balance in video mode. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. And that's about it. Uh, let's go back to uh, sepia mode real quick. And let's talk about the happy things on the XE2. You do have a lot of variations on the black and white mode for photo as well as video, and they revert back to the filters from the film days. You know, when you wanted to change the uh, color of a sky, 
You could put a blue filter in front of it if you want your sky to be really white, right? So you'll see the black and white mode marked with a B, and then you'll have a little sub letter there, and that's sub Y for a yellow filter, sub B for a blue filter, G for a green filter. Okay. Well, we're now in the sepia mode. It's one of those things, you either like it or you don't like it. I do find that it actually works really well for some things. Not quite sure it's the right choice for this, but it does allow me to say some of the really great things that we're liking about the XE2. When I'm shooting it, I'm going to go back and forth between autofocus and manual focus. When I'm going to shoot something like these rock and rollers, right? I'm going to start off changing a lens, walk into the spot, find my spot. I'm going to, with my front little finger, I'm going to flip that back to autofocus, typically single. I'm going to make my first exposure, or at least halfway down with shutter to set the lens. Then I'm going to flip that over to manual focus. And then I'm going to take it manual from there. And when I need help with autofocus, I'm going to put it back. So when I'm shooting, I'm constantly moving my autofocus with my left hand, and then I'm doing whatever control work I need on the right. We don't have a swivel and tilt screen on the back of this thing. And actually, I'm okay with that. I thought I was going to have a problem with it, but I'm really all right with it. And you are able to make critical decisions, of course, on the screen, but the EVF, when you look up to the eyepiece, is really nice. I mean, it's really nice. It's exactly the way it should be. It is nice and speedy. It's not the speed of light. There is a slight delay, depending depending on what you're shooting, but if you're shooting fast axing, fast action, you probably shouldn't be using a mirrorless camera anyway. That's kind of room for DSLR. But I really love the way the manual focus system works, and I know it sounds like you're going backwards, but trust me, please try it and understand how you're putting together these beautiful images that just feel really nice. So what kind of photographer wants to buy the XE2? Well, first of all, it seems like I'm seeing the photographers that already understand what the Fuji X series and what the X uh, X Trans sensor is from the X100 and the X100S. If those folks decide that they need to have a camera with removable lenses, it's a real easy choice to move up to the XE2 or for the XE1. I'm assuming it's still going to be on sale for a while. Next is the photographer that wants to either add hybrid camera to their system or is going to change from DSLR to mirrorless because they want to start working with hybrid. And the XE2 is finally the first choice that Mr. Hybrid here gives the AOK -okay to. This is a camera you can live with. All right. You remember, anytime you move types of cameras from medium format to digital, from digital to mirrorless, you're going to have to think what this new camera is and what it does, not what it isn't and what it doesn't do. That'll just get you frustrated. There is no direct replacement to DSLRs. Mirrorless cameras just work differently. And once you figure out how they work, you'll decide they work really terrific. Like those of you that started off with a PC and you got really frustrated. And when you got a Macintosh, you thought you was horrible and you hated it for the first three hours. And then you realize how it thinks and how it works and the fact it really does work and it doesn't give any trouble and all of a sudden you love Macintosh and you wonder how you got along without it. That's the same thing as your migration to mirrorless. Next, the photographer that wants to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. I'm toggling back and forth between the Lumix GH3 and the Fuji X-E2 primarily, but we use the rest of the Fuji cameras here too. Why? Well, we've got a beautiful black and white. We've got all the best pre-processing tools for still photo that, you, that money could ever buy, really. Next, those lenses are just lush. We can make big, gorgeous prints. The fact that I, I'm able to set that camera with what I really want, and I can see it on the viewfinder, and I can make that picture, and I know it's going to look terrific. When I shot this, for instance, here, this uh, another rock band picture, I set the camera to black and white and to square. And I adjusted the tone and I shot this picture. So when I looked at the viewfinder, I saw that final image. I mean, final image. So when I shot it, wow, that was crazy for my creative energy. That to me wants me to gravitate towards that camera. So I want to use this camera on every shoot that I can because it's really helping me become a better photographer. Now, I don't want to overstate the case because it is different. It is expensive and Fuji lenses are Fuji lenses, right? They don't fit any other cameras. I'm assuming somebody's going to make adapters to put them on something else, but I don't know. Remember, when you use a Leica lens, they're not autofocus. So you can buy an adapter. It's an excellent quality adapter and allows you to use a manual focus Leica lens. Great. All good. But if you're a photographer that's into having your photos look different than others, if you're a photographer that's moving into hybrid and you want to have a different look, a 
beautiful, super premium, high quality HD look, then Fuji is something that you need to take a look at. If you need automatic everything and you need an all-purpose general camera that's going to replace your Canon 5D or your Nikon 700 or D800, in fact, this is probably not the right system for you. But trust me, once you get a chance to shoot this, you'll see what we see and you will appreciate every minute of shooting a camera like the X-E2. We love it. Talking portraiture, e-products, auto-editing, e-templates, educational videos for shooting smarter, not harder, at the photochannel.pro. New vlog posts every day on hybrid photography and product recommendations, too, at hybridphoto.pro.